Hello, welcome to Katrina's Creations. This is the Wednesday episode and today we are going to be dyeing some yarn. I have opened up the skeins. I'll show them to you in just a minute. This yarn is from Knit Picks. They are little uh, 10 gram mini skeins. They are swish. I'll show you the label because I have taken the labels off. There you can see it. It is Swish Fingering Weight Yarn. And it is, can't read it backwards here. And I had to turn around because I can't read it backwards. It's 43 yards, 10 grams. This is their Bear brand of Swish, which Bear just meaning it doesn't have any color to it. And it is 100% fine superwash merino wool. So let me turn around the camera and I will show you the the things I'm going to be needing to do this and how I'm getting started. Okay, so supplies I need. I just have some plain vinegar. It's just white vinegar. I guess apple cider vinegar would work too. I I've just I have a big gallon of this, so I have mixed that with water. It's one part vinegar, two parts water. And I just have that sitting here because here are the mini skeins. I have opened them up so they're not twisted into hanks anymore, uh, but they are still like tied so they're not gonna get tangled or come undone. You can see they've, they've still got the ties here. So these are going to go into the vinegar and water bath. I think I'm going to set that in the sink so if it overflows, I don't have a problem. There we go, because I do want to push them down in here. And they're going to soak for about 20 minutes. And the purpose of this, whew, I can smell the vinegar. The purpose of this is it helps the dye to absorb better. So we're just going to leave that. Other ingredients I'm going to be using, um, this is Glad Cling Seal, um, it's just food wrap, uh, any kind of um, plastic wrap will work. I got this from the Dollar Tree, so I'm going to be using that. And then food coloring, um, I have two here simply because one of them only has two colors in it, um, but it's just your standard one that has um, blue green, yellow, and red. So this one had the same colors in it, but I think all I have is yellow and red left. Haven't decided what colors I'm going to make. I do know I had a request for purple, and I like purple myself, so we're going to experiment with that. So we will come back in about 20 minutes, so that by that time the yarn will be soaked, and we'll get started with the dyeing process. Okay, I am wearing a rubber glove just because I don't want to have uh, dye all over my hands. So I have pre-mixed a few things. This is purple. I used a combination of blue and red and I just kept adding it till it looked about right. Um, so this is purple. I have laid out the plastic, uh, plastic wrap. I have five of them laid out so I could just go from one to the next. The one over here, you can see I have some green. My idea with this is I'm going to soak it in the green and then I'm going to put some darker green dots and speckles into it. So I have this one set up and I'm going to do the same thing for, this is yellow, it looks orange but that's for yellow. And so that's this one. And then over here, I need to put the dishes away, they're clean, but um, over here I'm going to kind of do some rainbow color yarn. So I'm just going to do all the different colors and put them in there. And then this one, I think I'm going to choose two separate colors and put those in there. I just don't know which two colors at this point. So that's the plan. So it's been 20 minutes and I have squeezed the water out for the most part for these mini skeins, but I'll demonstrate on this last one. You don't want to wring these out. So this is easy to squeeze the water out with a small mini skein. It's a little more difficult if you're doing a full skein of yarn, but you're just going to press it out. Now 
Like I said, you don't want to wring it out because you'll end up possibly felting the yarn. So you just want to squeeze it out. And then I'll take it over to here. And I'm going to lay it down. And we are ready to get started. So we're going to start over with these ones that I am kind of dyeing the yarn making it tonal to begin with. So I'm going to take my skein, I'm going to dump it in here and just push it down and let it soak. And I'm going to put the others over here. This is the green. I love the green, that's going to look pretty. There's that, and then here is the yellow. You can also do this with Kool-Aid as well, or natural dyes, but I just find it's the cheapest to do it with food coloring. So we're going to do that, and then I'm going to rinse these gloves off. This one I'm going to be doing in some rainbow color, so we're going to get started with the yellow first. And I'm just going to squirt it into a couple sections. I'll put some here and I'll put some over here. And now I want to kind of work this color through all of the yarn. You don't want it just on one side. And you will turn this over and work on the other side. But you do kind of want to work it through. I'll do the same over here. Right now it looks more orange than yellow, but it is yellow. Now this one you can see I've worked it all the way through. I got it spread in a little bit better. This one actually won't need to turn this over. If I was doing a full skein of yarn, I would, but because this is so so small, I could actually just turn it. Okay, so that's the yellow. Let's put some green. And you do want these colors, in my case, I want these colors to flow into each other. So we'll put a little bit of green here. And I will do the same over on this end, right next to the, so if I can slide this down so you can see a little bit better. There we go. And then again, I want to be working these in. Make sure I turn it over. And I also want to make sure I blend it right between the two colors because I don't want to have like a white section where there's no dye. So I want to make sure I'm turning this as I go so I can make sure I have everything covered. There we go. And then I'll do the same over here. Okay, now I'll put some blue in, and I think I'm going to do the blue over here, because if I put it next to the yellow, I'm going to end up with green, and I already have green, so I want to put it over on this end.
and that way when I blend the last color, which will be red, I will have red against the purple, or red against the blue, which will create the purple, and I will have red against the yellow, which will create kind of a pinkish orange color, probably more orange. Again, I'm turning it just to make sure I get everything covered for the most part. I don't mind a little bit of white in it, but I'd prefer to have mostly saturated color. And then the last one is going to be the red. Trying to be careful not to get my clothes into the dye. That would not be good. Okay, you can see what this one looks like. Now I'm going to move the camera over, and I think the next skein, the last skein of yarn, I'm just going to put a bunch of speckles in all different colors in it rather than two colors. I think it's going to look too much like the other one. So here we go. And in this case, I'm just going to be sprinkling color everywhere. So it's just going to be a dot here and there of each color. I do want to make sure that I get some on that it goes through to the back because otherwise it's going to look a little weird. So we'll do this side and then I'll turn it over and I'll do the other side. This is the red. There we go. And I'll put some blue. Right now it looks like I have a leopard. polka dot yarn. There. And then last we'll do the green. Okay, now I want to turn this over because you can see it's all on this side, but if I look at the underside, it doesn't have that. So I'm going to flip this over. And we're just going to add, it doesn't look bad, but we're going to add a few other speckles just to even it out on both sides because this one I'm not blending. If I blended it at this point, I'd probably have a muddy brown. We don't want that. So there's the green, so we're kind of just evening it out a little bit. That's the yellow. And there's the 
there's some red. And the blue. There we go. Looks pretty even at this point. Now because I'm done with this skein and the other skein, I'm going to start the actual microwaving process. So we're going to fold this over. You don't want the colors touching each other because if they do, you're going to have your colors all bleed together. So you want to seal it with the plastic wrap. And once it's sealed like this, then you can go ahead and just fold it over a couple times like that. And let me do the same to the other. Really like how this looks. We're going to do the same thing. Fold this over, and then this side over, then the ends, and I'll fold it again, and again here. I have a microwave safe plate, and I'm going to put these on here, and I'm going to pop them in the microwave for about two minutes possibly longer. You're going to keep it on there till the yarn is almost dry. So we'll do two minutes and then I'll take a look at it and maybe we'll do longer. So while the yarn is microwaving, we're going to take a look at the blue yarn. Now this is going to be entirely too wet. So I am going to take this over to the sink and just squeeze some of it out. I am really happy with how this looks. It's a denim type of blue. To be honest, I don't think I'm going to do anything else with this. I think I'm just going to leave it as a tonal blue because I really like the way it's looking. So I'm going to close it up so it's ready to be microwaved when the other comes out. My kitchen smells like drying wool right now between the wet wool and what's in the microwave. Yeah, it smells like a wet sheep running around my kitchen. So that one I'm not going to do anything more to. Here is the green and again I'm going to drain this out and squeeze it out uh, to see what we have. I also am real happy with how this looks. It really looks like Irish green at this point. But I'm going to add a few more drops of, oh there goes my microwave but we'll let it sit for a few minutes. I'm going to put some extra drops of dark green in here just to give it a little little splash of speckles. I could put other colors in here but I really don't want it to look like a Christmas tree so and then I do want to turn this over So I can make sure I get it on the back side as well. Don't want speckles just on one side. There we go. So this one is now going to be ready to fold up. And my microwave's reminding me that I haven't gotten it yet. So there is that one. Let's go over and take a peek at the microwave. I didn't used to put this on a plate before I microwaved it and what I had happen was I had too much water in my yarn once and as a result uh, what ended up happening was the bag opened up, it tore 
and all the colored liquid went into the microwave and I now in the very back of my microwave have a little bit of purple technicolor down in the seams that I could never get out so now I put it on a plate. So this is our rainbow colored yarn and it looks like it is pretty pretty close to dry for what we want. Um, a lot of times if it's a bigger skein you're going to want to microwave it longer but this seems like, it, I mean, because it's so small, I think we're going to be fine. And you just rip the bag open that you've created out of the cling wrap. Now the last color that I have yet to do is the yellow. So I'm going to take this over to the sink and squeeze out the excess water. I am really happy with this. Sometimes when you do yellow, there goes my microwave again. Sometimes when you do yellow, it comes out um, really, really pale. But this is a nice, um, it's almost school bus yellow. I'm really happy with how that came out. And I think, I think I might mix a little bit of maybe some red into it because that will turn it orange in some spots. And I am going to blend this. I'm not going to leave it as speckles. There we go. And I'm going to just rub those spots in a little bit. I have no idea what this is going to look like. Hopefully not a tiger, but um, it's just fun to play with it and see what you come up with. Okay, I might mix some other color in there too. I have some blue, so I might turn this over and put a little blue in here because that's going to make spots of it turn green. I'm just putting dots of blue in between the dots of red. There we go. I don't want this to look too much like the rainbow we colored because that would be crazy to have two yarns that are identical. Yes, I hear you microwave. There we go. I think I'm going to leave this like this. Looks like something from Dr. Seuss colors, but oh well, we'll see what happens. Now I'm going to take those these three skeins of yarn and I'm going to microwave them as well. I'm not going to show that process because you've seen that already. So stick around to the end and I will show you what the finished yarns look like. Now I have microwaved these. The yarn is almost completely dry, but they do need to be rinsed, especially these the darker colors like the green and the red. Um, this blue is a little bit lighter, but you do want to rinse them real well to make sure that no color comes out. Now the blue seems to be pretty good. I'm not seeing any. I did have a lot of red come out with one of the other skeins. So let's take a peek at this green. This is the green that was speckled. And let's see how much color I lose. But you do want to make sure you get all of the um, excess. You can see some green washing out just slightly. It's not bad. I did microwave this a little bit longer than two minutes. I actually put it in for about four and a half to five to make sure it's set a little bit better because you don't want to make something and then the first time you wash it have the colors bleed into anything else. So the green here, that extra microwave seemed to have helped it. Here is the yellow that I said looked like Dr. Seuss. I think it's kind of cute. Let's see if I lose any color with it. 
I'm just washing it and it's um, just a mix of cold and warm. It's kind of lukewarm. And I'm not losing much color with that. So the, the, the clue is micro over. it's better to over microwave it and make sure the color sets. The first batch I didn't microwave quite long enough. And so the... Um, The rainbow color and the rainbow speckled did bleed a lot, especially the red. But let me show you what all of the yarns look like now, and you can tell me down in the comments below which is your favorite. So here is the Dr. Seuss looking yarn. Here is the green speckle, and you can see some speckles in there. Here's the denim blue. Here is the rainbow speckle. And here is the rainbow. Now you can see that red really did fade out to kind of a pink color, but it looks neat where it blended together with the yellow. But you can see it definitely kind of went more toward a pink over in here. So uh, although the, the green really saturated nice, it's got some nice deep sections in it, and so does the blue. So that is how to do dyeing with food coloring. Let me know which one was your favorite. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching. See you again on Saturday. Bye, everybody.